Good evening, how you doing? Welcome to Restoration Church. I want to thank you all for viewing this uh, video. Uh, tonight, as we continue in the book of Luke, uh, we're going to continue with Luke chapter um, 6, and we're going to start with verse 27. But before we start, I want to go ahead and say a few things, and we're going to open up in prayer, okay? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that you're going to do and all that you've already done. I pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this time of, of studying your word. I pray, God, that you would pour out your spirit, that you would reveal things to, to us, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, that you give me wisdom. And Holy Spirit, you're our teacher. You're our guide. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Reveal things to me. Lord, as we go through your word, I thank you, God, that we're growing thereby. And Lord, we're going to continue to grow forward in you, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you that you are giving me wisdom, Lord. And we worship you, Lord. We worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, I'd like to thank you again for watching. Um, it's a little difficult uh, ministry, preaching to the camera. It's not the same as when we were having services. So I just want to ask you to please bear with us as we grow in this because I'm not used to ministering on the camera or anything. But um, I just feel led in my heart to, uh, to let you know that uh, God is still in control and that he's going to continue to, to let his light shine upon us and let his light shine through us. So be a light out there, everybody, and continue to to share the gospel, continue to comfort others, to pray for others, and continue to, to uh, share the love of Jesus. Amen? Because we know that the, we have an enemy, it's the devil, but the Lord actually, Jesus was talking about loving your enemies. You know, and it's hard. It's hard to do that. When, uh, when all the stuff is going on, it's hard to love your enemies. Amen. So actually the heading on, on the next verses that we're going to continue on is uh, to love your enemies. And Jesus is talking about this, but um, we are, we're going to go ahead in verse 27. We're going to pick up on verse 27. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 27. But I say unto you, which hear. Now, I didn't keep on reading. Think about this. Are you hearing? Are you listening to what Jesus is saying? Have you been listening to the Lord, these weeks, this couple of weeks that we've been uh, shelter at home, have you been hearing? You know, in the book of Revelation, it always says, uh, Jesus was saying, him that has an ear, let him hear. In other words, we need to pay attention to what's going on around us. We need to really pay attention to all the things for people's uh, weaknesses, for people's uh, heartaches, for people's uh, stress. For all the things that are going on uh, because they're getting cabin fever, whatever it is. We need to hear. We need to hear what Jesus is saying. Don't worry about it. God's in control. He loves you and he wants you to love. Amen. So let me read it again. Verse 27 on chapter 6. But I say, but Jesus is saying, but I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Now, when I read this, I'm thinking about this. I know a lot of people don't like Christians. I know a lot of people. Maybe you have a strong, uh, uh, um, your, your persona. Maybe you're strong-willed. Maybe you're, you know what I mean? So everybody's different. But some people are hard to get along with. But you're supposed to love. You're supposed to love your enemies. And, and even those that, 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 uh, that hate you, you're supposed to love them. You know, it's funny because I was talking with, uh, with someone the other day about this. And uh, even Jesse Duplantis said this about his mother-in-law. He says, uh, he told his wife, well, honey, I'm, I'm, I'm called to love her. Doesn't mean I got to like her. Okay. So it's sometimes we got to understand that's his mother-in-law. Okay. Sometimes, you know. That's the Spanish called La Suegra, you know, the mother-in-law. But like I said, you got to love your enemies, okay? So I'm going to read it one more time. Verse 27. But I say unto you, which you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you. Verse 28. 
Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Have you ever been used? Have you ever been, um, you know, people call it stabbed in the back. Have you ever been where someone has done something to you and you're like, wait a minute, they just use me because of what I know or what I can do or who I know or whatever? Think about that. You know, you're supposed to love those that despitefully use you. You know, and, and it's sad because it's always going to happen. People are going to use you. You see, but if you have the love of Jesus, you're able to say, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm going to love them anyway. You know, Jesus himself was on the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. A lot of people don't know what they're doing sometimes. You know what I mean? All this, how about now? Look at all this stuff that people, oh, give me that. They're all fighting for toilet paper. They're fighting for stuff. They're hating each other. When I would just say, you know what? God bless you. You can have it. You need more? I'll go get some for more for you. But see, people are not like that because they don't know Jesus. We got to remember, forgive, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. People aren't knowing what they're doing when they're trying to use you. It happens, church. I've been used. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just let it go and I say, Lord, I give them to you. When, you know, the God, the Lord Bible says, then mind say it, the Lord. We're not supposed to trade evil for evil. We love and that's it. So that's something that I'm saying right now as I'm reading these scriptures. Very, very uh, emotional scriptures and very piercing. They cut through. You see, the word of God does. Remember, the word of God is a sword. It's not a feather. I'm not supposed to hear to tickle you. The word of God is a sword. It cuts through. It's not just a weapon. It's also for us. It cuts through both. Okay. Double edged sword, not a feather to tickle. I'm here to tell you what the word of God is saying. Okay. So verse 28, I'm going to read again. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which dis, dis, despitefully use you. Verse 29. And unto him that smiteth thee on the, on the one cheek, offer also the other. Amen. See, people are always going to attack you. People are always going to try to come at you. This is talking about spiritually, emotionally. Things come at you. People will attack you. You got to let it go. You got to allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon you. Like a duck, whenever things, uh, when a duck stays afloat because the oil on its feathers. Then like I've told you many times, church, those of you that have been tending services, let the oil of heaven be on you. So that way, when the things come, they just comes right off and just comes right off. Amen. And unto him that smited thee on the cheek, on the one cheek, after offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid, him, forbid not to take the coat, his coat, to give him the coat also. In other words, if he takes your cloak, give him your coat. Give him everything. Don't worry about it. You're blessing him. Just say, oh, that's it. Amen. Verse 30. Give to every man that asketh of, asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Verse 31, and as ye should, would, would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Verse 31 is the, the golden rule. Do unto others as you want to done unto you. Amen. Remember that. Verse 32, for it, if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those. Love, love those that love them. In other words, even if, how can you just love those that just love you? You know, even sinners, you know, they love those that love them. That's what Jesus is saying here. Verse 33, and if ye do good to them, which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. Amen. Just because someone's doing good to you doesn't mean for you do good. You do good for those Period. It doesn't matter who they are, what they've done. You do good to everybody. That's what Jesus is trying to say here. Do good unto others. No matter what. You see, you do all things as you're doing unto the Lord. Remember that. Amen. Verse 34. And if ye lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank ye? Thank have ye. I'm sorry. For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. 
Amen? So when you're giving to those and expecting to get in return, you know, what kind of joy is that? When I know that I'm trying to bless somebody, I'm trying to offer help to somebody. Now, if they don't give it back, well, what can I do? Amen? I'm not a loan shark. I'm not going to go and do something crazy and try to, you know, use my strong arm. I don't do that kind of stuff no more. Remember, that was B.C., before Christ. Amen? So praise the Lord. But love, verse 35, but love ye your enemies. Here he says it again. Verse 35, but love ye your enemies. Love your enemies. Now it's something hard to do. You know, I'm just saying it's, it's but why would he say it again? Here it is. Jesus is bringing this back again. Verse 35. On verse 27, he said it. Uh, I say unto you, uh, to have a here, to, to those who are here, love your enemies. He's saying it again. Verse 35. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your, your reward shall be great. Do you hear me, church? Amen. You don't worry about, you know, your riches are stored up in heaven. Don't worry about anything. Your reward will be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Amen? Remember that. You see, I know that I love the Lord. And I am a, children of, I'm a child of the most highest. That's where we've got to be. We gotta, we gotta really have discernment to understand. Okay, if this is happening to me, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna trust God, or am I gonna go in my flesh and be fleshy and be mad at somebody and be angry and start cursing them out or getting mad and getting where uh, having bitterness rooted in my heart, or am I gonna forgive? Am I gonna, I gonna love them? Am I gonna say, you know what? I, I might have lent that brother 20 bucks and he said, I, I was, you know, I, when, I, when someone says they want to borrow some money or whatever, if, I've, if I got it, I'll give it. And I'll just say, okay, I don't pretend like, oh, well, I'm lending to him, I'm expecting it back. I just pretend, well, if he blesses bless me back, then it's all right. If not, oh, well, amen. That's the kind of attitude we need to have, amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 36 now. Be ye therefore merciful. Do you hear what God is calling us to be? Merciful. You know, in this time of all this, this chaos with this uh, COVID-19, not many people are merciful. Not many people are even, they're all, it's about me, 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 me. The great unholy trinity, me, myself, and I. It's not about others. And that's sad. It grieves my spirit. You know, I'm out there running around and, and praying for people and praying for people's houses, anointing houses and doing all this in the past, in the past week or so. Me and another pastor and my wife and his wife, we've gone even all the way to Tier C. We've blessed houses. We've, we've blessed people. We've led about eight people to the Lord and, 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 you know what I mean, laid hands on them and prayed over them and all this stuff because we want to do it because we are doing the Father's business. Amen? So we're being merciful. We want to have show mercy. Amen? So verse 36, let me continue. It says, Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Amen? We got to be merciful, church. We need to be merciful. We need to trust God. We need to show mercy. We need to give mercy. We need to pour out the blessings upon those that need it. We need to, if, it, if it's just an encouraging word, if it's just a, a, a uh, a blessing of, of saying, you know what? Jesus loves you. Don't worry about this. Th this too shall pass. Things are going to get better. Believe me. Amen. So we got to trust in God and, and go forward in him and knowing that we got to do this. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to continue on. I got a few more verses. I want to continue. Now, this is a, another verse 37. It's another part of scripture where it says about judging others. Now, we know that um, a lot of people talk about judging. They say, oh, only God can judge me. Well, you know, it's true, but God, even Jesus himself says, judge a righteous judgment. He talks about you tell by their fruits. You know, we got to tell by their fruits. You know, we're not really judging, but we also want to tell them the truth and tell them, you know what? If God's going to judge you, well, you better pray that you're, you're, you're right with him now. Not until the day of judgment when you're dead. You know what I mean? Get right with Jesus now. 
So that's why. But a lot of people start saying that, oh, only God can judge me. But guess what? He will. He will judge you. He's going to judge us all. But I'm just saying that I'm here to, to offer hope. Amen. In Jesus. Verse 37. Judge not. Now look at this. There's a comma. There's a comma in this verse. Now, is it continuing forward or is it just saying, judge not lest you be judged? In other words, if you judge, you're going to be judged. Or is it saying, judge not? That means if you don't judge, then you're going to be judged. You see what I mean? Look at this. You've got to really look at the text and see. It says, judge not, comma, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. You see, as a forgiven Christians, we forgive. As uh, disciples, we disciple. See, it's like a given word. Forgiven people forgive. Disciples, disciple. Amen? Uh, that's just the way it goes. Verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. What's that? The forgiveness. It's not money. It's, we're here. We're not pulling this out of context. This is out of the same scripture, out of the same uh, 2020 rule that I've always given people. 20 verses before, 20 verses after to make sure you don't pull anything out of context. Perfect vision, right? 2020. Um, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressing down and shaking together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Amen. Give forgiveness to your bosom, to you. If you're giving forgiveness, people will forgive you. Amen? With the same... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure ye meet, with it all, with, with it shall be measured to you again. Amen. So if you're not forgiving people, people won't forgive you. Think about that. The same measure. Uh, you know, I mean, someone does me wrong and I forgive them. Now, if I've done them wrong, are they going to forgive me? You know, if I've forgiven them, them of what they've done to me, they're going to forgive me also. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 39. Well, let me read verse 38 in the whole. Okay. Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with, with all, it shall be measured uh, uh, to you again. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Amen. Shall they not both fall into the ditch? Think about this. If you're not forgiven, you won't be forgiven by Jesus. Okay. You forgiven people forgive. You see, how can you say, oh, Jesus, forgive me, and then someone had done you wrong, you'd never forgive them. you be got to be careful, because Jesus even said it. Don't, if you don't forgive, the Father in heaven will not forgive you. Amen? So we got to remember that. Are you blind in that situation? Are you saying, well, uh, I just want God to forgive me only, and I won't forgive anybody else that does me bad. I'll forget that. No, 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 no. You do not be blind in that area. Forgive. Forgive. Amen? Verse 40, the, dis the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Amen? And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceive not the beam that is in thine own eye? In other words, you're checking that, they're seeing them. Oh, well, I got to get that, that speck of dust out of their eye. But here you are with the big old beam because you got the same kind of attitude, the same unforgiveness or the same, you know what I mean? Just mad bitterness and all that. You can't do that. You got to be free. Amen. God wants us to be free. And remember who the son sets free is free indeed. Praise the Lord. Verse, um, verse 42. Either how canst, uh, either how canst thou say to thy brother, brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye. When thou thyself beholdest, beholdest not the being that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye. And then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. Amen. So are you really truly caring for people? 
and you're willing to check yourself before you wreck yourself. You check yourself out and make sure you're right with God, that you're forgiving them, you're forgiving others before you take out whatever's going on with your brother. Remove the things that are going on in your life. See, God wants to pull things out of our lives. He wants to clean our hearts. He wants to remove those things. And he wants us to be better Christians, better people of the way. And that's one thing we need to do. We got to trust God. We got to pour out our, the love of Christ. You know, the Bible says that freely you receive, freely you give. Well, he's given you freely love. He's given you a ability to forgive. He's given you abil ability to, to forgive and love others. So once you receive our love, it's free. It's freely you receive, freely you give. I know me, when I'm, before I was a Christian, BC, before Christ, I, I've, it was all about me. It was all about myself. And it was all about what I can gain and what I, all that stuff. And if someone did me wrong, man, you better watch it. Don't cross me ever again. But now, the love of Jesus came upon me. The love of the Father, the love of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And I'm able to say, you know what, God? You gave me love. I, now I can truly love. You see, I thought I was loving and I wasn't loving others. I wasn't even loving myself. So now that I love myself, you know, I love others. Because Christ first loved me. So I'm able to say, you know what? I'm going to love my enemies. I'm going to love those that persecute me. I'm going to love those that despitefully me, use me. I'm going to lend. I'm going to bless. I'm going to give without expecting something to get in return. I'm going to offer myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and forgive. And I'm not going to be all judgmental people that are struggling. I'm going to help them and show them, reveal to them, and show them the love of Christ. Then I'm going to do all this because guess what? I, I'm right with him. And I know that I love. And I know that I, I've checked myself. You see, I want to, if people want to judge me, that's fine with me. I know I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. But I strive to be like Jesus. I strive to be led by the Holy Ghost. And I want to be led by the Holy Spirit and share the love of God upon everyone. I want God to open up the eyes of my heart. I want him to know that I love him and I want to, him to know that I love his creation. See, how can you love, love God but then don't love his creation, his bride, his children? You got to love Jesus. You got to love your brother. You got to forgive. You got to, you know, all that. You got to love your enemies. So God is saying here, the Lord is saying to love and it's the greatest thing. You know, the fruits of the spirit, the beginning of the first thing is love. You know, love, long suffering, patience, and all that. You know, all the fruits of the, the, the nine gifts of the, the fruits of the Spirit. But love was first. Why was that mentioned first? Because it's there. You know, you got the, the chapter 12 about the gifts of the Spirit. Then you got ver, chapter 14, the workings of the gifts. And then right straight in, the, straight, straight in the middle on Ephesians chapter 13 is the charity chapter, which is love. So between the 12 chapter, uh, was it 1 Corinthians chapter 12? And then 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, between those two is the charity, the love chapter. So love your enemies. Love those that persecute you. Love those that hate you. And just continue to love. Amen? Praise the Lord. And that's one thing we need to do. Amen? And uh, we will continue uh, next week with uh, bearing of fruit, uh, verse 43. And we'll continue go going through the rest of the chapter. But I want to ask this uh, before we finish. If, you're, if you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to take this opportunity to, to, to invite you to receive Jesus. In other words, uh, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. It's not about what we've done. It's about what he's done on the cross. You know, the Bible says that today's the day of salvation for tomorrow's not promised. You know, in James, it says life is like a vapor. We're here today and gone tomorrow. So if you, if you were to breathe your last breath today, do you know without a shadow of a doubt you make it to heaven? Well, if you don't know, I want to pray with you a simple prayer and you can invite Jesus Christ into your life tonight, right now. So if that's you, please bow your head, close your eyes and repeat after me and believe this from the bottom of your heart. You see, we got to confess it with our mouth. So as you repeat after me, are you ready? Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, please forgive me of anything I've done that has not pleased you. I am sorry. I know Jesus Christ died on the cross, but I believe in my heart 
He rose on the third day. He shed his blood to wash away my sins. So I ask you, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am born again. I am saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I receive you now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now I'd like to pray for everyone. Um, usually, like I said, we do the prayer request cards. Uh, if, you need a pr- if you need a prayer, uh, uh, you can inbox me. Or you can, you know, the information will be... Uh, also, you can just message it there on the bottom of, uh, of your watching this, uh, this video. But uh, the prayer request is, uh, as they come forward, I, I'll be praying at midnight again. But I want to pray for everyone. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, for those that are that are stressing out, those that are hurting, Father God, those that are going through stuff, uh, whether they, if they lost their job or if they're in harm's way. I pray for everyone, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you continue to pour out your spirit, Lord. I pray for protection. I pray for a direction, for healing, for salvation. I pray, Lord, for those that are, are putting their prayer requests, Lord, for those that are, are, are sick, afflicted. I pray also, Father God, for, uh, for, for those that are, are afflicted with the coronavirus, Lord. I pray for Nanette, Father God, uh, uh, Emily's mom, Father God. I just pray right now, Father, that you make her whole. I speak healing to her kidneys, Lord. I pray, God, also, Father, for those that are hurting. I pray for uh, uh, Stephanie, Father God, in the hospital. I pray that you... The infection, whatever's going on, Father, we remove it. We bind it at the root, Father. And I thank you, Lord, for healing. I thank you, Father, for deliverance. I thank you, God, for the spirit of unity in the body of Christ. I pray, God, remove all the schisms, all the things that are, are just dividing churches, Lord. I pray, God, for unity in the body. And I just thank you, Father God, for what you're doing. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. And remember, tune in on Sunday morning at 1030. Uh, I'm going to be talking about patience. God bless you and have a blessed day.